So my name is Joy Osbaugh, as Amy said, and work for the Farm Service Agency in the state office here in Stillwater. We do have a lo our local CED here, Gail Holland. Gail, would you stand up? I'm sure you all know her. So if you have questions past when we leave, be sure and contact Gail because she knows her job. So I'm responsible for a couple of different programs. Um, as far as administration, I work with the county offices to help them administer those programs. Uh, one of the programs is the emergency conservation program. Did any of you have any disaster or any effects of the flooding this year? <coughs> any land that was damaged? So that's my program. Um, some things that changed with the ECP program this year, they changed the payment limitation and increased it from 200000 to 500000 And one of the other things that they added in the past, if you were a limited resource producer, you could receive up to 9% cost share. In the 2018 Farm Bill, they added socially disadvantaged and beginning farmers. For socially disadvantaged, that's non-gender. So if you're female, that means you have to be another designation for socially disadvantaged. Another thing that they added was advanced cost share payments for fencing are now available for up to 25%. Excuse me, I'm getting old. Um, so there's been some good changes with the ECP program. The final rule was published in July of this year. Uh, we've had quite a few disasters in Oklahoma. It hit close to home this year, so I hope you guys were able to make and use of that program. The other program that I'm responsible for is the Conservation Reserve Program, and that program is designed to take sens economically sensitive land, environmentally sensitive land, and put it into a program that protects it. It also is good for wildlife and water quality. There's two types, actually three types, of CRP, Conservation Reserve Program is what we call it. It's um, we have a general sign-up, which is usually larger plots of land, larger acreages, and then we have a continuous sign-up, which is usually those smaller acreages that are usually like riparian buffers, waterways, um, little sensitive areas. So, and then another option is a CRP grasslands program, which would probably benefit a lot of producers in Payne, Lincoln, Noble County. Um, that program is designed to pay you 75% of the net cash rental rate for grassland program, and you can still graze it. And I think Gail's probably talked about that at some of our meetings. <clears throat> During the week of October 7th, FSA distributed more than $1.7 billion to CRP participants. We had a little hiccup in our software, and some of those payments didn't go out, so if you didn't get a payment and have CRP, they're coming, because they've opened that software back up. FSA will have a general sign-up in December. We're kind of limited on what we can tell you because they haven't published the regulations yet. But what we can tell you is there will be a sign-up in December, and then in the spring, we will follow with a CRP grassland sign-up. The soil rental rates have been posted this week, so if you stop by the county office, Gail will be able to show you what the soil rental rate is for your property. It's based off the three predominant soils for your, for your land. And one of the things that I noticed in looking at those soil, soil, soil rental rates is that Payne County went down this year. When you guys provide information to NAS on your cash rent data, you need to make sure you provide the correct information because when you don't, it affects your, rental, your CRP rental rate. So make sure that you're providing them with the correct information for your cash rent. Um, some of the changes with CRP, they increased the acreage to 27 million by 2023. Um, eight, two million of those acres will be devoted to grassland. They have a couple of new programs that are devoted towards uh, water quality, and one of those is clear. Um, Clean Lakes Estuaries River Initiative, and what that program will do will allow longer um, agreements or buffer type practices for water quality. One of the things they did with the annual rental rate this farm bill is they limited it to 85% of the estimated county average rental rate for general CRP and 90% for continuous CRP. 
With continuous CRP, which is your more sensitive areas, you can get a practice incentive payment and a signing incentive payment. So the good thing that I noticed in this CRP program is that they've added some expanded opportunities for hanging and grazing for producers. So I think you guys will be pleased when you hear the changes for that. And then, let's see. I think that's about all I have for CRP. Does anybody have any questions for me? Hi, I am Danny Lee from the State Office uh, Farm Service Agency, and I just got a quick update on a current program that I want you to uh, make sure that you sign up for if you're eligible. It's a program called the Market Facilitation Program. It's a program that was passed by Congress because of all of the problems with the tariffs and exports and the prices going down for commodities, so there's a uh, three categories of crops that you can receive a payment for, either a non-specialty crop, a specialty crop, or dairy and hogs. The non-specialty crops is a large list of crops. If you grow them and you've certified those acres, you get paid based on those acres, whether it's alfalfa, hay, barley, canola, corn, cranberry, dried beans, dried peas, uh, cotton, flaxseed, lentils, long grain, well that's rice, don't have rice here, millet, mustard seed, oats, peanuts, rapeseed, rye, safflower, sesame seeds, small and large chickpeas, sorghum, soybean, sunflower seeds, uh, triticale, and wheat. So all of those crops are eligible based on just the acres that you have uh, planted and certified to the county office. Those crops that fall under specialty crops, uh, for Oklahoma that would be pecans, uh, and any fresh grapes that we would have in the state. Um, and there's also a category of dairy, the milk uh, producers and hog producers are eligible. And the uh, rate is different per county. Uh, in this area, it's around $20, $21. Um, I'm not sure where all of you are from, but just an example, uh, Creek County is $20 per acre. Uh, Lincoln County is 24, Logan's 15. Nobles 21, Pawnee 21, Payne 21, I think I saw K County producer, and I think uh, K County is uh, $35 per acre. So all it is is a program that if you've planted these crops, you come in, you sign up for them, and we've already made 75% of the payment as of last week, so payments come real quick. Just wanna make sure that if you've got these crops to come in, and certify. So it just takes uh, you certifying to us. Uh, if you haven't already certified timely, uh, potentially we can take late filed certifications uh, for those crops. And uh, those specialty crops, uh, the, the prices I gave you uh, just a second ago was for those non-specialty crops. Uh, for those specialty crops, uh, the price is a, for pecans is $146 an acre. And for hogs, it's $11 a head, and any dairy producers, it's 20, 20 uh, cents per hundredweight. So those are payments that are available. Don't want you to miss out on them. So if you haven't signed up, come see us, and uh, we'll take care of you. Any questions on that? All right, thank you. Okay, good evening. Um, I'm J.D. Elwood, and uh, I also work at the state office uh, in Stillwater. Joey, did you introduce Gail already? Okay, did you introduce Kelsey? Okay, Kelsey has to stand up. K Kelsey just went to work for Farm Service Agency. She's a COT, a county operations trainee. She'll be working with Gail. She'll be training to be a CED in a county office one of these days. And also Terry... You probably recognize Terry Henley and Sarah Greider. They used to work in the county office with Gail, but now they work in the state office. And we work together in the same section, production and payment eligibility. Um, Trent was probably more entertaining than I'm going to be, and I'm going to bore you with a bunch of details about ARC PLC probably. Um, 
Gail said, all you all want to know is which program to elect. I'm going to tell you everything but which program to elect. Um, so uh, like Trent mentioned, I'll go ahead and get started with uh, ARC PLC. It's pretty much the same program as it was in the previous farm bill. Um, they've tweaked a few things. Uh, there's new election options. We've already mentioned that this evening. You're going to have a uh, choice to change your election if you want to in crop year 2021. We'll go over all of this. These first few slides uh, are kind of an overview. You're going to get a chance to update that PLC yield if you can that Trent was talking about. Um, there was a grass idle fallow provision put into this farm bill. Um, if you had farms that were planted to grass all of the years, um, 9 through 17, you are not eligible for ARC PLC, but you are eligible for a program through NRCS, the GCI program. If you were eligible for that program, you've probably already received a letter, maybe more than one letter, <clears throat> telling you that you were eligible, and that deadline has come and gone for this year. Um, ARC County... Uh, those bullets there, that's more internal changes that were made when they're calculating ARC County, uh, the benchmark uh, revenue. They're going to be looking at RMA yields first instead of NASH yields. They're also going to use RMA trend adjusted yields. Um, ARC County is going to pay on the physical county. It's going to pay on the county where the land's physically located. So uh, <clears throat> if you have land in Payne and Noble County, uh, maybe you take care of all your business in Payne County uh, and you have that land that was physically located in Noble County. Uh, all the records were in Payne County and the Pat old farm bill, uh, whatever the Art County payment rate was for Payne County, that's what all the uh, base was paid on was that rate. Um, now in the new farm bill, we're going to pay the payment rate. It's going to be a blended payment and it'll pay the payment uh, based on where the land physically sets. Um, so again, in this new farm bill, <clears throat> you're going to elect just like you did in the previous farm bill. The election is for 2019. It's, ir it's irrevocable for 2020. So whatever you elect in 19, uh, that's the program you're in for 2020. Then you're going to have the opportunity to change that election in 21, 22, or 23. If you choose to, you don't have to, it's your choice. But remember in the old farm bill, there was a lot of anxiety. Um, you know, Congress did what us that work in county offices don't like Congress to do. They gave you all a choice. You had to choose between PLC, ARC County, or ARC Individual. And then after you selected one of those, it was irrevocable for the life of the Farm Bill. Whatever program you chose in 2014, that's the program that you were in uh, through the entire Farm Bill. Well, this year they changed that up. They loosened it up a little bit. They're going to let you change your election in any one of those last three years, if you choose to, you don't have to. And if you fail to come in, and I'll show the deadlines later, but if you fail to come in and elect for 2019 by next March 15th of 2020, that's the deadline for 2019. If you fail to come in and elect by then, then your farm serial number is going to default uh, to the election that was on the farm in the previous farm bill. Um, again, you'll get to update, you'll have an opportunity to update your PLC yield if you want to or if you can. Um, we're going to be looking at the years 2013 through 2017. It's a simple average. If you planted the base crop in one of those years or all of those years, it's going to be a simple average of those five years times 90 percent times a yield adjustment factor. This is the same uh, uh, calculation that we used in the previous farm bill except we just did the average of the four years 08 through 12 times 90 percent in the new farm bill we're going to look at years 2013 through 2017 times 90 percent then again times an additional yield adjustment factor uh, and your yield update will be affected with the 2020 crop year it won't be affected with uh, for 2019 uh, again, uh, ARC County is going to pay on physical county where the land is physically located, where the base acres are physically located. Uh, and then again, farm eligibility. Um, a farm's eligible to participate in ARC PLC if it has base acres or 
maybe there was some CRP on that farm and the base acres had been set aside, maybe the CRP expired this past September 30th or will expire during this farm bill. If it doesn't get back in CRP, those base acres can be added back to the farm serial number and then those base acres can participate. Um, this slide here is just, you usually hear uh, this out of us all the time. We want you to protect the land. We want some type of cover crop out there or the actual commodity, wheat, corn, beans, milo, permanent vegetative cover, uh, maybe even a volunteer stand, but we don't want the land uh, washing away, blowing away. We want to protect it from wind and water erosion and noxious weeds. Uh, any crop can be planted on base acres uh, and still earn your ARC or PLC payment except fruits and vegetables. If you plant fruits and vegetables on payment acres, uh, you may have to have an acre for acre reduction. Uh, that's probably not going to be too big of an issue in this in Oklahoma, but it can happen. Um, eligible producers are owners and operators, tenants, other producers uh, who share in a crop on the cropland or the base acres. So if you're an owner or an operator and you share uh, in the crop that's out there on the cropland where the base acres are, we expect you to have a share uh, on the ARC PLC contract also. Those, those slides were uh, <clears throat> kind of an overview. I'll talk a little bit about the yield update now. This is your PLC yield in our office. It's, it's the yield in our office. If you have a wheat base, you have a wheat PLC yield. If you have a soybean base, you have a soybean PLC yield in our office. It's an owner's choice to update this yield. It's on a covered commodity by covered commodity basis. And what this means is, if you have a farm serial number that has wheat and bean base, you can update the wheat yield, but you don't have to update the soybean yield, but you can if you want to. Um, and then again, the yields will be effective uh, beginning with the 2020 crop year. Um, and the note down there that says applicable to covered commodities with base acres on the farm, if you want to update a soybean yield and you don't have a soybean base on that farm, you, don't, you won't be updating a yield. You got to have the base eight, you got to have the base crop on the farm before uh, you would have a PLC yield that you would be eligible to uh, update. Uh, there's those ratios. Um, corn is 90 percent, and wheat is 0.9545. This is that additional ratio. Whenever we're looking at the years 13 through 17, we take the simple average times 90 percent, then again times the, the crops, this additional ratio, uh, and I'll have an example here. Uh, not all 22 covered commodities are on here. There's a, there's a couple of commodities missing, but all 22 covered commodities have this additional ratio in this farm bill. Um, here's an example of corn. Um, in this example, this producer, we're looking at years 13 through 17. It's a simple average. This producer has a corn base. He currently has a PLC yield of 105. Uh, he didn't plant corn in 13 and 14, so we're going to ignore those years. We're looking at 15, 16, and 17. His yield on the acres that were planted on this farm was 150, 190, and 119. There is a substitute yield. If your actual yield is less than the substitute, we'll let you substitute that in. So in this example, of updating a PLC yield on a corn base. This producer, we'd take 150, 190, and 122, add together, divide by three, take it times 0.9, take it times 0.9 again, because that is corn's um, ratio. And this guy would come to 125. This 125 is better than 105 that he currently has, so this producer would want to update their PLC yield. And anytime you can update your yield, you want to take advantage of that. And if you elect to participate in ARC County or ARC IC, you can still update your PLC yield. Here's another example of just where uh, a producer has a wheat base, has a PLC yield of 32, the substitute's 46. 
the only year out of those five years that this producer planted wheat was in 2015. So 60 divided by one is 60 times 0 0.9 times 0.9545, that was wheat's ratio, and that comes up in this example to 52, so this producer would want to update their PLC yield. So you don't have to update your PLC yield. You may not be able to update your PLC yield, but if you can, you want to take advantage of that because they don't always offer this opportunity uh, in farm bills for you all to update your yield in our office. Um, they may do it again when this farm bill expires in the next farm bill, but it may be two or three farm bills down the road before they offer an opportunity to update your PLC yield. Um, the PLC yield is used for PLC payments. It's a farm record yield that we keep in our office on file. And if you participate in Art County and don't participate in PLC and you update your yield, you may not use it in this farm bill, but that updated yield will be set in there for future farm programs. Uh, in case the PLC yield is used in those programs. Um, the owner on the farm is who updates the yield. Uh, the only way the operator would be able to do that is if the operator has a POA so they can sign for the owner, but it's the owner's decision to update the yield. Um, lots of times the operator, especially if they're a cash rent operator, they're probably the one that has the information and knows what uh, the production's been on the farm 13 through 17, so that operator can go in and, and do all the paperwork. If you don't have a POA, you can take it out and have this form CCC 867 signed by the owner. That's the form that's going to generate if you want to update your yield. Or if the tenant or the operator or somebody on the farm or someone has a POA uh, in our office, they can sign for the owner to update the yield. Uh, again, the PLC yield is uh, used for PLC payment purposes only, and the PLC yield has nothing to do with ARC County or ARC individual. The deadline is September the 30th of 2020. Uh, I'm going to talk about it in a minute. The deadline for 2019 election and enrollment is March 15th, but you do have until next September the 30th of 2020 to update your yield if you want to. So if you don't get around to doing that immediately, but maybe next July or August, you're like, you know, I think I could update my PLC yield on my farm. You have until September the 30th of next year to go in and update that yield. <coughs> Is there any questions about the, the yield update? Uh, one thing you all will remember, I'll go ahead and say it now, I don't have any slides. In the previous farm bill, you had an opportunity to reallocate your base acres. Maybe you had all wheat base, but you in like 08 through 12, I believe, um, maybe you had been planting bean and corns and you wanted to change some of that wheat to corn or bean base. We're not doing that in this farm bill. There's no base reallocation. Whatever base you had on your farm serial number when uh, the 2018 farm bill expired, uh, or when the 2014 farm bill expired, whatever base acres you had on your farm, those are the base acres that you have on that farm for this farm bill. The only opportunity you have to update anything is your PLC yield. So we're not reallocating base acres. Um, I'll talk a little bit about PLC now. Uh, like Trent mentioned, PLC, <laughs> yes. If you only had a farm for the last year, do you get that one year for the yield? That or? If uh, that's a good question, so you only had the farm in out of 13 through 17, you only had it in 17. Yeah. If you could, if there was wheat planted on those acres in 13, 14, 15, and 16, I don't know what kind of relationship you might have with the previous owner or operator, you can get that information from them, or you're just going to have to use the substitute yield for those acres if you don't know what the yield was or you can't get that information from those folks that were on there in those previous years before you took the land over. Good question. Is there any other questions? Um, like Trent mentioned, 
PLC, it's the simplest of our programs. It's a price loss program, just like it says, when the price is below the reference price, PLC pays. Um, these are a list of the 22 covered commodities that are eligible for ARC or PLC. These are the reference prices. These reference prices, reference price is kind of a new modern day term. We used to call them target prices. That might be what y'all are more familiar with. But these reference prices are the same on these 22 covered commodities for this farm bill as they were in the previous farm bill. They didn't change. And I think Trent mentioned that. So they didn't go lower. They didn't go higher, but at least they didn't lower them. So uh, corn is 370. Wheat is still 550. So PLC is pretty simple. Anytime the 12 month market year average price of wheat is below 550, PLC is going to pay on wheat. Um, and the payment rate, like I said, it's the reference price. Actually, this is one of the tweaks they had. You all won't have any calculate, you all won't have to do this calculating. It'll be done by the national office but it's the effective reference price minus the effective price equals the payment rate. This is kind of a busy slide. Um, you'll remember on the previous slide we said that the reference price was 370. There is an opportunity for that 370 to increase if these market year average prices would happen to be really high. But in this example, um, 370 times 115% is 426. That's the highest the reference price could ever be. But the only way it's ever going to increase from 370 is if these market year average prices go up. And this is just an Olympic average times 85% is where this 303 is. And then there's the reference price. Most of the time the reference price is going to be what it is. Um, but there is an opportunity for the reference price to be greater than uh, what's in statute. But most of the time it's probably going to be the reference price. Wheat's probably going to be 550. Corn's probably going to be 370. Um, PLC, uh, the PLC payment's pretty simple. It's your base acres times 0.85 times your PLC yield times the payment rate. That's pretty much what we've been doing for the last several years, maybe my whole career. Uh, we've only paid on 85% of your base. Uh, so ARC County and PLC pays on 85% of the base. Uh, Non-payment acres or free acres, that's going to be the other 15% of your base that we don't pay on, or 100% of the unassigned generic base. Uh, and that comes from some cotton stuff that we did. In the previous farm bill, cotton base went to generic base, and then last year we converted it either to one of those 22 covered commodities are seed cotton, and if you couldn't do that, you got stuck with unassigned generic base. And then those farms that were all grass idle or fallow, um, those farms, those are non-payment acres. So, uh, like I said, PLC is pretty simple. If you got a farm that has 100 acres of corn base and a 200 bushel PLC yield, the effective reference price is 370. And we'll just say that the 12 month market year average for corn was $3.30. That's a 40 cent difference. So 100 acres times 0.85 times that 200 bushel yield times 40, that's the payment that the farmer receives. And everyone in the United States that elected PLC on corn base all gets that same 40 cents. Your payment's just determined by your base acres times your PLC yield times the 0.85. And I don't know if y'all can read this or not. Hopefully you can. Um, this is as of November the 8th. I think Trent while ago said the projected price was 458. But on here, they've got 460. So right now, for 2019, they're projecting the 12-month market year average price of wheat to be 460. So 550 minus 460 is 90 cents. If that holds true, 
when the marketing year is complete next uh, May 31st, if that holds true, then there will be a PLC payment made on wheat for 90 cents. Everybody in the United States who has wheat base and elected PLC is going to get that same 90 cents. That's pretty much PLC. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Is there any questions on PLC? I got my experts that work with me in here, so if I miss anything, hopefully they'll jump up and say, you told that all wrong, J.D. Okay, so now I'll talk about ARC. Um, ARC or PLC may be elected on a covered commodity by covered commodity basis. If you choose ARC IC, the election is for all covered commodities. So what this says is, if you have a farm serial number, and that farm serial number has wheat, corn, and bean base on it, you can put the wheat and PLC and the corn and PLC and the soybeans in Arc County if you want to. But if you want to choose or elect Arc IC, all three of those base crops have to go into Arc IC. You can't put the wheat in PLC, the corn in Arc County, and the soybeans in Arc IC. Arc IC is an all or nothing. Arc County and PLC, you can, you can switch those up uh, on a farm serial number. Um, Arc County provides income support through revenue calculations at the county level. In PLC and Arc County, you don't have to plant the crop. If you have a wheat base, you can have all your acres planted alfalfa. And if you elect Arc County or PLC, if wheat triggers for either one of those programs, you're going to get that wheat payment, but you may be all planted alfalfa or all planted to corn. You can, uh, it's not dependent on what you plant other than the fruits and vegetables. And there's no requirement to report any production if you uh, participate or elect uh, ARC County or PLC. Now ARC individual, it wasn't very popular in the last farm bill. I'm not expecting it to be too popular in this farm bill. Gail, did you have any? One. ARC individual, you do have to plant a covered commodity on those acres, and you do have to report production. Um, so that, and that's the only difference. So what ARC County does is, ARC County looks at the county yield and the market year average price and determines a revenue for the county. And for 2019, we're going to look at 13 through 17. And all this calculation will be done for, for us by the national office. So we're going to look at an Olympic average revenue for 13 through 17 for the 19 crop year for that entire county for that crop. And then we're going to look at the 2019 crop and we're going to look at the yield and we're going to look uh, at the price and determine what the 2019 revenue is. And if that county suffered a loss, Everybody in that county is going to get the same payment. ARC individual is the same concept, except we're just going to look at you as an individual, 13 through 17, and determine your benchmark and guarantee. And then we're going to look at your farming operation for 2019, and we're going to see if you had a revenue loss. Uh, and if you did, then we're going to pay you on that. That's So ARC county and ARC individual both work the same. It's just ARC county is everybody in the county is in it together. ARC individual, you're in it on your own. If you had a revenue loss compared to your previous five years, we'll make you a payment. ARC County, there was a revenue loss compared to the county's previous five years. ARC County will pay. Um, ARC County calculates a benchmark revenue. 86% of that revenue is the guarantee. We have to calculate an actual crop revenue. We have to see if there was a loss. There's a 10% cap. Um, Trent mentioned this. Sometimes ARC County is called a shallow loss program because there is a 10% cap. Um, probably back in 14 and 15, some of those ARC County wheat payments would have been $60 an acre, but they were capped at 10%. So they were capped at like $15, $18, $22. They would have been $60 if it wouldn't have been for that 10% cap. 
So Arc County is capped at 10% of the benchmark revenue. That's why sometimes folks call it a shallow revenue or a shallow loss program. So here's just uh, any county for 2019. We're talking about a corn crop. So in this particular county for 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, we got to know what the county yield was. Then we look at the market year average price. It's an Olympic average. They drop the high and the low. They get a yield. They, uh, they get a yield right here. So they drop the high and the low. The 163, the 183, and the 155 makes 167 for the yield. They do the same thing with the price and get 530. And once again, y'all don't have to do this. This is calculated by the national office. But so 167 times 530, that's where they come up with the benchmark <coughs> revenue. So based on these five years, this is the benchmark revenue for 2019. $885.10 for this county for corn in this example. And then again, 10% of that is the cap. So $88.51 is the cap. And we said on that previous slide back there, once we come up with the benchmark revenue, 86% of that is the guarantee. So in this example for 2019, $761 is the guarantee. And we'll just say for 2019 that this county's county average corn yield was 108, 181. And the 12 month market year average price turned out to be $4. 181 times four is 724. So that guarantee is 761 minus 724, that's $37 short. It's less than the cap, so the ARC County payment is $37.19. So all we do is if you have corn base and you elected ARC County, we take the base times 0.85 times that payment rate times your share, and that's the ARC County payment. Everybody in this county who had corn base and elected Arc County gets the same $37.19. Just depends on how much base acres of corn you had. <clears throat> Determines what your payment is for that farm. And you'll notice in here the PLC yield was used in none of that. So Arc County doesn't use the PLC yield. It's a, it's a revenue program. Um, since we're looking at 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, we already know what the 2019 benchmark revenue and guarantees are for all the counties. Uh, it's, it's out there on a website. Uh, I pulled up Payne County and Wheat's down here at the bottom. If I go to the next slide, this bottom number is Wheat. So for Payne County, for Wheat, the benchmark revenue is 159. 86% of that is 136. 10% of that's 1591. So the maximum payment that an ARC that ARC County will pay in 2019 in Payne County is $15.91. Um, so we already know that the guarantee is 136.83. They were projecting the price of wheat to be 460. I don't know what the yield was in Payne County for wheat. They haven't announced that yet, but if it was $30, 30 times 460 is like 138. 138 is greater than that guarantee of 136. That means Arc County would not pay in Payne County <clears throat> because the revenue for 2019 would be too high. If that yield turned out to be 25, I think 460 times 25 was like 122. And 136 minus 122 was like 15 was like $22 maybe or something like that. But anyway, you wouldn't even ah, you wouldn't even get all of that um, difference because 1591 is going to be the cap. So uh, I don't I don't know what the county average yield would have been for wheat and. Payne County for 2019, but you probably got a pretty good idea that Arc County is probably not going to pay 
PLC, we know there's a 90 cent payment there. So most people are probably going to be looking at PLC uh, for 19 and 20 because prices are low and there's not as much anxiety in this farm bill because you have an opportunity to change that election in 21 if you end up not liking PLC after you elect it. Is there any questions about Art County? Everybody's going PLC, right, Gail? Did Trent leave? Oh, okay. Um, so anyway, here's what you all are going to be doing between now and March 15th. Um, you're going to come in and elect. You're going to have to make a decision. You're going to come in and elect and enroll. Uh, once again, it's uh, unanimous. Whatever you elect in 19, that's the program you're in for 2020. Uh, the election and the enrollment, it's all on one form, one trip. Uh, and you're going to do 19 and 20, more than likely, when you go into your county office. Um, it started in September, like I said, March 15th of 2020 is the deadline. Uh, we have to have an election and an enrollment to make it complete. Uh, it's a one-time opportunity to elect ARC or PLC. And then here's those uh, options. If you want to change your election, you have to do it by March 15th of the applicable year. So whatever you elect right now, that's what you're in for 19 and 20. If you want to change your election in 21, you can, but it's up to you to come notify us that you want to change. If you don't come in by March 15th of the applicable year, there is no late filed election. You can change it for the next year, but you're not going to change it for that year. So if you don't like the program you're in and you want to change, it's up to you to come in by March 15th of the applicable year and change that election. Otherwise, it's just going to roll over uh, and use the previous election that was on there the previous year. There's not, no requirement to take any action. You are going to have to come in and enroll, but you don't have to do anything to the election. Of course, we want the, whoever shares in cropland acres or base acres on the farm, that's who's going to share in the ARC PLC contract. That's who we need signatures from uh, on the ARC PLC contract. Um, Election is not enrollment, so if you elect in 2019 and you elect PLC and you know you're going to be happy with PLC, you're never going to change your election, that's fine, but you still need to come in and enroll. Unless there is an opportunity for a uh, multi-year contract, uh, that'll kind of be up to the folks at the county office whether or not that'll work for you. Um, if that works, you may not have to come in and enroll in the following year if you do the multi-year contract, but you're still probably going to come in and report your acres and do other programs, so it doesn't let you out of not coming in the office. We tried that back in 1996, right, Danny, and it didn't work. You guys were going to come in and sign up and never come back again, and I think they were back by the next year. <clears throat> Once again, if, if the producers do not make uh, a unanimous election in 2019, then whatever uh, program you were in in the previous farm bill, that's what it's going to default to, and you're not going to be eligible. I hit the wrong button every time. You're not going to be eligible for a payment in 2019. So if you want to be eligible for a payment, if the program you want to participate in triggers a payment, you need to make sure you get in and elect by March 15th. Otherwise, it's going to default to the previous farm bill's election, and you will not be eligible uh, for a payment in 2019. And then again, uh, if producers do not make a change to their election in 21 through 23, whatever election is currently on the farms, what's just going to roll to the next year. And then here's the uh, deadlines uh, for 2019. March 15th is the dead deadline to elect and enroll. 2020 does have some additional time to enroll, but that's for enrollment only. There may be instances where the producers for 2020 are not the same uh, as they were in 2019. So that gives those producers time to come in and enroll uh, a little bit of extra time. But basically, if you can, you're going to elect and enroll for 2019 and 2020 before March 15th. And then each year after that, you're going to come in and change your election 
or enroll by March 15th. And then again, if you want to update your PLC yield, you have until September the 30th to do that. That's my last last slide. Is there any questions on the election process? Oh my. Gail. Oh, okay, right. Is, is there any questions on election and enrollment? Gail wants me to make sure that everyone in here is signed up to get texts from the county office. That way you know when deadlines are and when programs are announced. 